Howdy guys, Jimmy Song here. In this video, I'm gonna reflect a little bit because I used to be a developer on Color Coins and talk about why it, why it didn't work, what happened, and like sort of the history behind everything. Because, uh, you know, I, I was involved and it, it, it was kind of a big project. It's the first open source project in Bitcoin that I contributed to and uh, I, I do have very fond memories of that. So what happened? Why, why, why isn't Color Coins a thing on Bitcoin? Well, to some degree, um, it is, uh, you know, Omni and uh, and I think Counterparty are both built on top of Bitcoin. They're sort of like Color Coins protocols, um, and there were also like five other uh, other ones, including Chrome Away, Colu, and a bunch of other ones, which uh, whose names I can't remember. But why didn't it work? And why why are uh, sort of like the Color Coins equivalent on Ethereum, uh, which are more or less tokens like ICOs and stuff? Why why are they why did they work so much better on Ethereum? Um, so first thing I can think of is that uh, you know the color coins movement on Bitcoin was very very scattered. You had multiple implementations. You had lots of lots of different people. It was uh, you know it, it was too many people doing too many different things. Nobody can really standardize. Uh, whereas with Ethereum, you had basically um, you know Vitalik you know saying okay well this is what it's going to be. There's an ERC twenty standard. Um, they published it for everybody and uh, you know if you download the development tools that's like the first thing that you, you do um, so they, they organized it a lot better second uh, Bitcoin uh, color coins didn't really have that much marketing uh, ethereum had a ton of marketing they had a lot of people they had a ethereum foundation that was uh, you know supporting all of this stuff they were pumping it all over the place um, and this was like sort of the first use case that they put out for everybody so that that certainly helped a lot um, and the the third reason was the market just simply wasn't ready um, uh, at least when I was in color coins the, the use case that a lot of people were thinking was for uh, utilizing it uh, as a way to distribute equity right in a, a company that already existed not as sort of like a Kickstarter for you know uh, some sort of utility token or something like that which which is the use case that uh, you know uh, ERC twenty tokens like that. That's that's what made them take off, um, and you know, doing corporate bonds or something like that, and being able to pay people without knowing who they were. That that was a use case that a lot of us were thinking, um, and they they admittedly found a much better niche in uh, sort of a Kickstarter like community donation like uh, thing, or at least that's what ICOs claim. So that that's that was a large part of it. Um, so between those things, uh, you know, not being at the right place at the right time, it was way too early, I think. Um, you know, uh, having multiple implementations uh, and like not having the marketing power, I think were, were the reason why they weren't, uh, that didn't work. Now, looking back on it, I don't think there's really any use case for it that really makes sense because you still have the Oracle problem. You still have, uh, you know, like uh, private keys. If they get lost, what happens? That's that's like a really big deal. And if you have a centralized entity, they're going to try to not uh, incentivize people to steal. In which case, you don't really need anything decentralized. You can just have something centralized, and that that makes much more sense. So, um, you know, looking back on it, I was, I guess, a little bit young and foolish and thinking that 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 was. Uh, that was more the use case that would actually work. So anyway, uh, you know, a little bit of reflection on my part. Hopefully that helps you. Anyway, this song is done.